Learn English through stories D3. Adapted and modified by Kulwan Singh Sandhu. Contents 1. A narrow escape 2. The Kuzbu in my life 3. Accident 4. Crash 5. The Crow and the Cobra 6. The hungry fox who got caught in the tree trunk. 1. A narrow escape. It was the middle of the night and very hot in the room. The fan was not spinning. I got up and I was sweating profusely. I switched on the light, but there was no light. I thought that there was some kind of electricity failure. I went out of the room to get some fresh air. It was stormy outside, and that might have been the reason for the electricity failure. I drank cold water, took a chair and sat in the veranda. Suddenly, I heard a scream. It was coming from our neighbor's house. I was so confused, now what to do? Then I gathered courage and went inside to fetch a torch. I took the torch and started moving towards my neighbor's house. I peeped in from the window and saw two people who were holding the owners at gunpoint. I stepped back and started thinking of my next step. At that moment I heard a car approaching nearby. It was a police car on patrol. I signaled them. They stopped and asked me what the matter was. I told them the whole story. They immediately went inside to help the old couple. The criminals were shocked at the sudden arrival of the police. They tried to escape, but the policemen took prompt action and caught them. We heaved a sigh of relief. Suddenly the whole area was illuminated as the power supply had resumed. The old couple saw me and thanked me for my quick doing, and they gave me a 500 rupee note as a reward. I went back to my room and switched off the light. The fan was spinning fast and the room was much cooler. I lay on my bed thinking, how should I spend 500 hundred rupees? I couldn't go back to sleep. I got up and switched the light on and picked up the McDonald's menu from the table. What shall I have for breakfast? 2. The Kuzbu in my life. A flower of Champa. For the past few days I had been observing a thin, small, but sweet girl come and sit on the bench. I never saw her talking to anybody. From her appearance it seemed that she came from a very poor family. She wore the same frock every day. One day I couldn't control myself and went to talk to the sweet girl. After talking to her I found that her father had died in some clash during street violence and that her mother had gone out to work. Her name was Kushbu. When I talked to her she replied with G every time. She was very polite. I pointed towards our house and told her that I lived there. I asked her to come with me. The girl thought for a while and then held my finger. I was delighted that she had come with me. I offered her something to eat which she ate after washing her hands. All my family members were impressed by that sweet girl. I showed her some storybooks with illustrations that she looked at very carefully. I asked her if she went to school. She told that her mother could not send her to school as they were very poor. Tears filled in her large innocent eyes. I decided to teach her. As soon as I reached home from my college, she would run to me. This became a routine. I was glad to find that she was a lover of books. For hours together, she would turn pages of storybooks and inquire in detail about what was being spoken by the characters. Her desire to learn made me go a step further. I went to see her mother and discuss how we could educate the girl. It was decided that she would attend a local government primary school and come to me for extra lessons in the evening. My mom said that she would pay for her clothing and other expenses. All her school lessons were in her native language and I started teaching her English. She read books, listened to audio, watched videos, asked questions, and so on. She started with Old MacDonald had a farm and went further and further. One day she came with a bag full of fresh ladies' fingers okra. I was so surprised that where she got that expensive vegetable from. She told me that a mum had started working at a farm. The farmer was very generous. He gave her mum fresh vegetables every day. I realized that a mum wanted to return the favor no matter how small it was. 
Chump a tree. Since that day there has been no looking back. We both share a very wonderful relationship. Her name is Kushbu and my name is Champa. Kushbu means fragrance or a pleasant sweet smell. Champa means magnolia. It is a small tree with a pleasant sweet smell. I don't think that there was any fragrance in my life before, but now I have certainly Kushbu in my life. 3. Accident It was a scorching hot summer day. People were busy running around searching for cooler places to escape from the heat. Those who left work were trying to get home quicker. They were driving faster than the usual speed. Those who were to catch buses were walking fast towards the bus stand. The roads were very busy. Some people were crossing the roads through the traffic. Mr. Jane was returning home after his monthly visit to the bank to collect his pension. He was in a rush because he didn't want to miss the 4 to 30 bus otherwise he would have to wait for another 30 minutes at the bus stop. He started crossing the busy road in a hurry. Suddenly, a loud screeching of brakes was heard. He was lying on the pavement. Many people were rushing towards him. Somebody from the crowd came forward and helped him sit up. The car driver had applied brakes at the right time and that saved the old man's life. She rushed out of her car and came to help the old man. She apologized profusely and seated the old man in her car. She took him to the nearest hospital. The doctors checked him thoroughly and said that he was perfectly fine. He suffered more from the shock than the injury. She decided to drop the old man home. There she saw his wife in the photo of his grandson, Mukesh, hanging on a wall hook. Mukesh and she went to the same university to study economics. The old man's wife asked the girl to sit down and have a cold drink. When the girl was taking her drink the WhatsApp call came from Delhi. It was Mukesh calling. His grandma answered the phone and told him what had happened. Grandma passed the phone to the girl. Hello Mukesh, it's Lata, not Lata Mukeshkar, Lata Sharma, said the girl. Oh Lata, long time no see. They talked for a long time. 4. Crash Rita was on her Honda Activa scooter. She knew that she was already late for college. So she was driving faster than usual on the busy road. But she was alert and careful. All of a sudden, her mobile rang. It was her elder sister Jody on the other side. Rita placed the mobile against her left ear and continued riding. Hello Rita, are you listening? Jody asked when Rita did not respond properly. Yes, I'm listening, do tell me whether GJJ has gone to the office and tell me about Sohana, she must have got on her school bus yes, Rita, I wanted to ask you if you would like to come with us to Goa. Goa. Wow. How can I say no, Jody continued telling Rita the program, while Rita began to imagine the beautiful beaches of Goa in her mind. Then Rita uttered a loud cry. A loud bang of a crash was heard. Some people came rushing. Rita was lying unconscious on the road. Her scooter had bumped into a car. The car driver stopped and acted like a sensible person. He found Rita's home number from her contacts and called her mother. Then he carried Rita in his car to a nearby hospital. A fortnight passed. Rita had a minor fracture. Jody was on the phone, Rita, how are you now? We have cancelled our program and are coming to see you. So nice of you but I will go with you to Goa. Don't cancel anything. 5. The Crow and the Cobra Once there was a crow couple and a cobra. The crows were living on the top of a tree and the cobra was living in a hole nearby. Every time wife crow laid eggs the cobra ate them up. The couple was very sad. They thought to themselves, if we don't have baby chicks who would look after us when we get old, one day, they flew to the nearby lake. They drank water and then started discussing their problem. They decided that they should consult their friends and seek help from them. So they went to their friend, the fox, and told him their story. The fox said that he was too busy taking care of his daughter, 
and had no time to think of anything else. They returned home sad and depressed. The next day they went to their friend, the female monkey. They told her their story. She said that she was too busy taking care of her mother-in-law and had no time to think of anything else. They returned home sad and more depressed. The next day they went to their friend, the pigeon. They told him their story. He said that he was too busy taking care of his wife and had no time to think of anything else. They returned home sad and even more depressed. The next day they went to their friend, the jackal. They told him their story and they looked very tired. He said, before we discuss anything let's have some food and drinks, he gave them a slice of pizza each and fresh milk that he had just collected from his friend, the goat. When they had finished eating and drinking, the jackal suggested that they steal a jewel from the queen and put it into the cobra's hole. The couple returned home with some hope. The next day, husband Crow flew towards the palace of the queen. When he reached there he looked around. He saw the queen bathing in the canal and her necklace was placed on a stone nearby. With his clever dive, he picked up the necklace and flew home. On his arrival he saw the cobra getting into his hole. He quickly dropped the necklace into his hole and flew to the top of the tree. The soldiers who were chasing the crow saw the necklace in the hole. They picked up the necklace and banged their feet near the hole. The cobra was scared and came out of the hole. The cobra saw the weapons they carried, spears, swords, axes, and many more. Seeing the weapons, the cobra escaped from the place never to return. The soldiers were happy because they found the necklace and were to receive awards. The crow couple went to their friend, the jackal, and gave him thank you card. The card read, Dear friend Jackal, From the bottom of our hearts, we would like to thank you for your help to remove the brutal killer, the cobra, never forgetting the crow couple. The crows lived happily forever and their eggs hatched 750 crow chicks. Hope is being able to see that there is light despite all of the darkness. Do not stop, even if you lose somewhere. By walking go on thorns you will meet the shadow of spring. 6. A hungry fox who got caught in the tree trunk. Once upon a time, there was a hungry fox that was looking for something to eat. He was very hungry. No matter how hard he tried, the fox could not find food. Finally he went to the edge of the forest and searched there for the food. Suddenly he caught sight of a big tree with a hole in it. Inside the hole was a package. The hungry fox immediately thought that there might be food in it, and became very happy. He jumped into the hole. When he opened the package he saw slices of bread, meat and fruit in it. An old woodcutter had placed the food in the tree trunk before he began to cut down trees in the forest. He was going to eat it for his lunch. The fox happily began to eat. After he finished eating, he felt thirsty and decided to leave the hole and drink some water from a nearby spring. However, no matter how hard he tried, he could not get out of the hole. Do you know why? Yes, the fox had eaten so much food that he became too big to fit through the hole. The fox was very sad and upset. He told himself, I wish I had thought a little before jumping into the hole. This is the result of doing something without thinking about it first. 